Here's the gravity of the situation, nation. Are you 17 years old or younger? If you answered yes to that question, then you were not alive for a single one of this band's releases until now. Surgical Steel, a new album from Carcass. 17 years in the making since 1996's swan song, The Masters have returned. But in 17 years, have the Masters been able to retain their form? Especially now, for this recording, at least they were a three-piece that did not include an Amat brother that instead had Bill Steered handling all of the guitar slinging. Oh, wow. Where to begin? Where to begin on this uh, album? This album is uh, about 47 minutes long. There's 11 tracks, and the very first two tracks don't even span three minutes. That's right, two tracks, not even three minutes. Immediately, you uh, kind of think that you're taking a trip in the Wayback Machine all the way back to the uh, late 80s, early 1990s, and yeah. No, not really. Musically, it's very different. Musically, you're hearing more of a resemblance of an evolution of the sound. Uh, that was originally conceived with uh, necroticism, uh, that was pushed even further through hard work, that became even more, uh, you know, geared a little bit closer toward, I guess you could almost say, the Gothenburg melodic death metal sound uh, with Swan Song. However, the riffs, my friends, the riffs nation, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the riffs have been magnified. Basically, if I were to give this album its own little unique type of build-up, one of those legendary creations that Cover Killer Nation gets to do, I would say that this has the riffs of heart work, it has the lyrics of a necroticism, or uh, symphonies of sickness, uh, titles of probably an album of that variety, not to mention just an overall ferocity, an overall just in-your-face kick-assery of Heartwork and Swan Song. Now here's the thing. Here's the skinny of it. Here's where the division line has been and where it will continue to be 17 years later. If you were expecting uh, the grindcore that they were able to produce in the latter part of the 1980s, uh, this album does not go back to that style at all. I mean, there are still shades of that band. That band was always in there still. However, their, their musical sound evolved throughout the 90s. As all of you know, this is not new information. That is the sound that they have uh, continued on and really have uh, enhanced here with Surgical Steel in the year 2013. Now, here's the one thing that just fucks me off. Fucks me sky high, fucks me left and right, and just makes me want to cry. Like I'm Big Bubba's bitch. I know, that joke was slow forming, but, um, and very obvious, but here's the thing. Whenever some of these principal recordings began, uh, they were financing them, uh, financing these recordings themselves because they didn't have a label backing. What the fuck? Who doesn't sign Carcass? Who doesn't hear that they're producing new material, writing new material, and just says, you know what, nah, that's okay. I don't need Carcass. I'm just going to go out and get the next Sleeping with Sirens, and I'll be fine. Morons. Anybody who didn't jump on this opportunity that was finally jumped on by Nuclear Blast Records very wisely, so might I add, is insane. Now, hopefully what will happen is that as more information is unearthed, we find that these were very secretive recording sessions, that they hadn't even shot the material around, and that's the extent of it. Not the fact that it had already been put out there, that they're putting new, uh, out new material, that they're formulating a new album, and record labels looked at this idea and were just like, you know what, nah, that's okay. Because if that's the case, then they really fucking missed out. They really fucking missed out. This album has a lot of terrific elements to it, and I've mentioned already so many in the introduction of this video. However, I must reiterate them with a little bit more of an enhancement, a little bit more of an opening as to why this album uh, does all of those elements so particularly well. Uh, for one, you expect a very, very tight riff core with... Uh, um, with Carcass considering the style of music that they promote. They're, they're not necessarily a band that's going to really uh, go from low to high as far as tempo is concerned. You're not going to necessarily hear a lot of slower tracks that really kind of murk along. Uh, you're going to expect a lot of fast pace. You're going to expect to have that thumping, you know, pace that you would expect from a melodic death metal band. This is something that is all too familiar to us, and it's something that they're able to continuously do well with some minor enhancements. Whenever you look at this, you're going to notice two things right away. 
away the first thing I already mentioned, the very first two tracks, minute apiece, roughly. There's one that's closer to two, but that really doesn't matter at this point in time. The second thing you're going to notice, there's a, there is a song on there that's more than six minutes, and one that's more than eight, and you're going to think to yourself, Jesus fucking orgasm. And you know what? You have every right to say that. The riffs on this album are absolutely tremendous. Let me tell you, Bill Steer. Rob the fuck out, Bill Steer. A man who has constantly seemed to step up his game year after year, project after project. He constantly seems to find a way to evolve his sound a little bit more. And really with Carcass, he's had a lot of great backing uh, behind him. He's had a lot of great, uh, you know, great cast that's really been around him uh, as he's been a part of this band along with the, uh, the rest of uh, the members. Uh, however, for this album right here, knowing that he was going to be handling a lot of the riff writing a lot of the riff slinging, a lot of the guitar work on this disc. Man, he just did an excellent job of not only retaining Carcass's core sound, uh, however, uh, but also enhancing it and throwing out more that they can do in the future because the riffs on here are insanely creative. They are very, very inventive, and the one thing that I, I was really thinking was going to happen with Mount of Execution, the very last track, I was kind of expecting it just to be a long song that kind of had a, a flow that didn't go very many places, but still got the job done. That's almost what I expected, but man, did he throw me through a fucking curveball. The very first minute of this song, literally the first time you listen to it, you kind of get up like this, and you think to yourself, oh god, oh what's going on, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up, please don't fuck it up. They don't fuck it up. They don't fuck it up. This is a song that is able to really take that trademark pace and slow it down. It's able to take a riff and really build and develop it early on in the song, early in the composition. This is not a track to be taken lightly. This is something that is going to kind of take you aback. It's going to take you by surprise. You might not necessarily like it for this reason, because it isn't that thunderous pace on a constant basis. It instead has a lot of building blocks to it. It instead has a lot of development and a lot of developing ideas throughout, and that is why this is the song that really took me completely off guard off this record. It's the reason why I've always said that the last track on an album gives you free reign to experiment and do whatever the hell you want. You could do one of two things on a blast track. You could just try to put all your balls in one court and just fury your way to a finish. Either that or you can take the time to actually do something a little new, something a little unique, kind of throw all the spaghetti on the walls and see what sticks. And man, did they do that in this case. And a lot of the fucking spaghetti stuck. That's all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to leave a lot of the surprise up to you, the listener. But throughout this entire album. Firstly, just look at the names and you're going to understand why this just has that feeling of a carcass record. Why it just has that feeling that we've just entered into a time machine and gone back to a time before fucking rhinoceros has had more talent than half of the pop stars. Uh, you look at these names. <coughs> fucking cadaver, uh, pouch conveyor system, a, con a uh, congealed clot of blood. These are names I can't even speak because I'm so amped about this. Non-compliance to AST MF 899-12 standard. The Grandulating Dark Satanic Mills. Unfit for human consumption. The names are back, motherfuckers. And they are back with the vengeance, back with the fury, and the riffs that accompany them. The vocals that accompany them. The thundering drum and bass that accompanies it just absolutely suits the mood. The mood has returned. Wow. This took me off guard. I'm not going to lie. I, I knew that Carcass was capable of producing a tremendous album in 2013, regardless the 17 years of uh, not being active as a band. Uh, they had been active long enough uh, just on the festival scene and on the touring scene uh, where it is just kind of, it, it was not a question uh, of whether or not they could do it because they had been touring long enough and kind of been back in the music long enough uh, that the carcass tone, the carcass sound, the carcass fury, the carcass attitude has returned to these gentlemen, and it's something that still replicates its fury to this very day. So that's not something that I was concerned about. I was instead concerned about the material sounding a little bit too much like they just took a little baby step from where they were with Hard Work and Swan Song, but instead I feel as though they took a gigantic leap forward. And 
I love the fact that this is a band that in this new millennium and really this new decade of the 2010s still has this ama amazing relevance and is one uh, you know due in one part to their history and their importance to the genre of heavy metal, but it's also in the fact that even as gore fathers, they're able to not let age temper them. They're not allowing age to slow them down. They're not allowing age to really shift their message. They're still just bloody motherfuckers. They're just still people that really love to dive down into the autopsy room, fit with the abattoir, and just carve. I love, I love, I love the cover of this album. All of the steel, all of the implements, all of the different devices that are used in the process. Beautifully rendered. Lovely, lovely cover. Definitely one that should be a very, very good omen for everybody who potentially was a little bit concerned about this album. It may seem a little simplistic to some, but examine the detail of every piece of equipment and you'll realize that the slaughter pigs are back. Man, buy this album. This is one to purchase. If you're here in America, September 17th should be like a holy day. Fuck Christmas. Fuck Easter. Fuck all those days that are associated with invisible sky beings. Take a holy day and buy a record. Something that you can feel. Something that you can hear. Something that exists. And this is one amazing record that exists. And you're going to love it. I guarantee it.